Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's me and Malik here. He's lying right next to me sleeping. So if you hear someone snoring, it's him. I was thinking, I have my computer down here so if I'm looking down, I was thinking to go through some true or false when it comes to feral hounds. How much of the information online do I think actually is true? And how many things do I think is false? And I'm just gonna go from the experience of having him. So it's like in relation to Malik, my own dog. Uh, so this doesn't go for all feral hounds, but I just thought it would be a fun way to go through a little bit about the feral hound uh, instead of just reading information that you could probably find online. But you know when you get a dog, you look at all of these uh, dog information, breed information, what are they good for, uh, what are they suitable for, and it's so hard to actually say how your individual dog is going to be like, what personality he or she actually is going to have. Uh, so I just thought it would be fun to compare what they say about the feral hound to Malik, my feral hound. So I'm on a website that's called Dog Time and I think they have really nice overviews over breeds in a nicer way than maybe like the kennel clubs which are way more into appearance. So I'm gonna go through a little bit about the feral hound first. Uh, just so we get like our basic understanding of the feral hound. So fair hound is a very majestic side hound, in my opinion at least. And as you can hear by its name, it sounds like its origins is from Egypt. Uh, and they look very much like uh, the dogs you can see in tombs from ancient Egypt. But they were a rabbit hunter who comes from Malta. But what they think is that they have been bred to resemble the sleek desert side hounds from ancient Egypt. So that's why they look very much like those tomb drawings. But the feral hound was, as I said, a rabbit hunter uh, and it's a national dog of Malta. And it remained quite unknown to like the rest of the world until the 1930s because that's when it was imported to England and it was not until 67 it was imported to the US. So it's about 80, 90 years ago it started to be more popular around Europe and the US. It is still a rare breed. I think it's uh, one of those breeds that you either know of or heard of or they kind of go under the radar from in comparison to other sighthounds. So they come in a range of colors, uh, about 50 different shades of red. They also can have some white markings. We think that he will get like a little bit white on his chest and maybe a little bit around his eyes, but he doesn't have the white tip on his tail, which is a unique uh, feature of a feral hound. It's also funny because feral hounds blush. Uh, they get red on their nose and in their ears when they get excited or cold. And for Malik, he has started to do it. So sometimes when he's really cold and we play outside, you can see his nose turning red, which is quite cute. They don't have any black pigment in their bodies. So their nose are completely pink and even their uh, nails have no black in it, which makes it super easy to trim their nails because you can see uh, all the details so you don't cut too far which is very convenient compared to other breeds but let's dive in to personalities what do i think is true and what do i think is false mm. let's see feral hounds love their own people and entertain them with their clownish acts this is very true uh, malik loves me and my partner very much he is very in tune with us and he is a little clown. But then there is a flip side to that, uh, that they can be aloof to new people and that is definitely true. Does not necessarily like other people inside the house. Outside he's very excited to meet new people and he wants to jump up on everyone. 
but in our house he is a little bit guarded the best thing i have found to do with him is to take him with me downstairs when i open the door to our apartment complex and go together up because that seems to like soothe him a little bit so that both of those things in personality is true second thing he's smart and willing to please most of the time this is true the second one that he likes to have it his own way absolutely but he's very smart and he is willing to learn he finds training really fun i think he's almost five months now and i think he's starting to become a teenager so what was easy a few weeks ago is not necessarily as easy anymore uh, he doesn't just do things because you tell him to uh, I have found that the easiest way to train him is to just wait out the behavior you want and then give him treats to kind of lure him to do something or to uh, trick him he doesn't learn by that he has to like figure it out himself and then he gets it and then he wants to do it number three the feral hound can be a bit sensitive. Yes, I would say this is true as well. He is, as I said in my first video, very sensitive, uh, especially to anger, I feel. Like if you get frustrated with him, he is very sensitive. Um, He's also sensitive to a lot of sounds, so he wakes up easy if there's a lot of sound. He's very sensitive to touch, so you have to like kind of ease him into touch. And now he's getting way better, and he's actually a little colored boy. But yeah, he definitely, this is true. Don't let your feral hound run off leash in unfenced areas. They have a strong prey drive and chase uh, animals for miles. Uh, he's still a puppy, so I would say maybe. Uh, so as of now, we can have him off leash in certain places. So we, if we go to the woods, we sometimes let him off leash, especially if he's with other dogs, because he kind of stays with the pack. If I will ever be able to have him off leash when he's an adult in an area that is not enclosed, I don't know yet. Uh, I would hope I could because he is a dog that needs to run a lot and it would just be nice for him to have that freedom but as of now he's a puppy and he kind of loves his mom and dad too much to run away so as of now it's false but it might be true in the long run. Feral hounds can do well in homes with other canines but smaller dogs might trigger their prey drive. I say this is false for our fair hound. He loves small dogs. Big dogs, he gets a little bit intimidated, especially if they bark. It's like he gets surprised by the grand sound. But he loves small dogs. He loves playing with them. He bows down, so he becomes the same size as, as them. My parents have a miniature schnauzer and he loves playing with him. So I would say this is false in our case. He loves small dogs. Frau hounds are barkers and they can get into like a bark a ton, but they just bark and bark and bark and bark. I would ah! <laughs> Or they yawn like he did now. Hello, honey. Hello. Uh, I would say, yes, he is a barker. He kind of found his voice at three months. Yeah. At uh, three months, I think he found his voice and he started to bark a little bit more. Uh, he has two different barks as of now. One is the play bark, which is kind of high pitch. And then one is more of a guarding bark, which is uh, way deeper. But we're trying to manage his barking 
I think it's okay if he barks a little bit. Like it's good that he alerts us if someone is coming and things like that. But we don't want these like extensive barking. But we will see. Look who just woke up. Here. Yeah. We're talking about you. Then we have a nasty thing. It says on this dog time article that they are stool eaters. Uh, which means they basically eat poop. Um, but so far he hasn't started like eating his own. And as long as he doesn't do that. Uh, I mean he can be nasty sometimes. But he's not that nasty. So I would say that one is false. And then it says... Feral hounds are easy distracted. This is very true. If there is a sound he haven't heard before, people he haven't seen before, places, he's very easily distracted. It could be because he's a puppy, but I also think that he is a sight hound, but he also hears very well and he smells very well, but it's just so many impressions at once so he easily gets distracted. Then we have an important aspect and it says here that he adapts well to apartment living. I would say yes, we live in an apartment and he seemed to be fine with that. Uh, and where we see a problem is of course with the running around. We can't have him play too much in the house because it would just get so messy and he would everything would fall down. Also, his uh, zoomies, when he gets those, it's very hard in an apartment and it would be nice to have a backyard to just let him out so he could run off that extra energy and steam. Uh, so in those senses, apartments are not perfect or ideal, but I think he adapts well to being in an apartment. And we have him on really long leads so he can run a lot. but. He adapts well to apartment life, but it's not ideal. So I would say both true and false. As our last true and false about the fair hound, according to us, <laughs> uh, I think we have the most important aspect. It says here on the website, good for first time dog owners. And I think that's a really important aspect when you think about getting a dog and you're looking at these breed characteristics and what would suit you and who what kind of breed you should have because some breeds need more activity more mental stimulation i feel like he's a doable dog for anyone especially yeah he needs a lot of like mental and physical stimulation every day absolutely but it's not extreme training and as long as he gets to run a little bit every day, he's fine. And as long as he gets to train a little bit every day, he's good. I also think because they are so dog friendly, they're a good breed for first time owners. I also think because at least he is very food motivated, which makes him fun to train and easy to train. I would say, yeah, he is a good dog for a first time dog owner. Absolutely. So as we went through this list on dogtime.com, we can see that most things they write is actually true. Some things we haven't been able to evaluate yet because he's a puppy, but I would say that 90% of what they're writing is true for our dog. Your dog might be different, your fur hound might have other characteristics, but for us, it's very accurate. And I would say before you buy any breed, no matter what breed you're interested in, do a lot of research. Never just buy a dog because of its appearance or because you met one dog. Make sure you go to a good breeder, even though if you adopt, go to a good adoption center and try to meet as many dogs as possible to get a feeling of what are your needs and what do... <laughs> What are you looking for in a dog? And after we did our research, we found that this was the dog we wanted. So until next time, do your research and hope you get the best dog for you. See you soon. Bye. Can you say bye to the camera, Emily? No. Okay.